Parshat Tetzaveh. Um, these are difficult uh, parsha to, to find uh, something phenomenal. Um, there are there are things. Uh, uh, there, there's, is one, there's one discussion about the Urim Batumim and the Ruach Hakodesh that is in it. Right. That is one mysterious pasuk, and he go, he goes into it quite a depth here. Um, oh. Why do we, why do we need the bells? Why do we need the bells? Do you understand what I mean by yes, that? Yes. Why do we need the bells bing, ringing that should be heard when he comes in to Kohen Gadol, comes into the Beit Amigda, into the Kodesh, right into the Mishkan? Doesn't have the bell, and there's no ringing in You're interested in that? Well, this is one I'm writing about. Oh, well, does that mean we should do it or shouldn't? It doesn't make a difference. I see. There's a great question. There isn't any any answer in there. That how uh, where these guys got the oil? Oil. Yeah, to to make it burn. Oh. Because they are in the desert. Well, how did they oh. how did they get everything that they had? Olives. Olives. <laughs> olives. I don't know if you find olives too often in the desert, but uh, well, I don't know. To some oasis, or they took olive. With, they took olives with them from Mitzrayim. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. In the desert, and there's no. Well, well, you remember the Ramban was talking about how there were some merchants that would come by. Remember, he told he gave them rules and regulations how they should be nice to merchants and to strangers that they see that they may, they might meet in the desert, and there were probably caravans of tradespeople who passed. And anybody who wants to sell something, when they would hear about two million people walking through the desert, they probably would say that's a good market to go and sell things. No? So, anyhow, so Walmart, okay. Walmart and the sister. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, so so um, <coughs> you the bells, and then he says there's one other thing about Hashem puts his shechina, his presence, among the Jews for his own for his own sake. That's a pretty. That's a pretty amazing statement. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There's two. There's okay, one. you want to do that one? I mean, no. I, that one I no. never heard of. No. For his own sake, it's Perik Chavtet Pasuk Mem Vav. Uh, if you have a Bible, okay, you don't like the Bible, I think. <laughs> Perik uh, Perik uh, Chavtet Twenty Nine. Twenty Nine. Yeah, that's good. That's good. Uh, I, wish, I wish I could say the same. Pasuk what? Chavtet 46. 46. 46. Chavtet 46. 29, 46. Come on, where, where am I? I can't find it. 29, 40. Yeah, very short. Short? Very short. To rest I, I, my I must be in the wrong book or them. something. What's going on, Shmod? Yes. And the Frakim are not, the, are not the way you... Yes, to rest. Wow, wow. One second. Wow. Okay, wow, it has the same book. It's Chavtet or not? Yes, And they shall know that I am God, their Lord, Asher Eretz Mitzrayim, that took who took them out of, and that I took them out of the land of Egypt, to be able to dwell in them. I am the Lord, their God. So you notice, uh, among them, in, in them, I don't know, okay, in their midst. Uh, so that, I know why he's doing this. We'll see in a moment. Yeah, uh, means I did the following thing. I took them out of Mitzrayim. Why? So that I will be able to dwell among them. How does he, how does he translate the English? To rest my presence. To 
I took them out of Mitzrayim to rest my presence upon them. So it's not like I took them out of Mitzrayim because they were very nice and because they were suffering and because I promised to their forefathers that I would take care of them and so on and so on. Now that they are out, if they deserve it, and if they want me to, then I will uh, dwell among them. I will put my uh, presence among them. No, that's not what he said, right? The Torah says, I was looking for the opportunity to put my dwelling somewhere. So I took out the Jewish people so that I could dwell among them. I mean, it seems like the, he, you understand, there's a suggestion that God himself needed to do this, wanted to do this, so he took them out so that he could... So that he can himself. go, so that he can do Nothing it. Well, that's, the Ramban is going to discuss it. I mean, I, I know that you notice that the, the language makes a hint of that, no? So, uh, which which page are we going to be on as far as you're concerned, sir? Is Taf Pei Vav. You got it? You're ahead of me. Taf Pei Vav, did you say? I only have a yarrow he made by Israel. Yeah? Where is this? Well, why can't I see what's going on here? What's, what's the. No, I smote. Oh, tough. Of course. I am very sorry today. I'm obviously a little bit uh, discombobulated. It's because Judy's been away for so long, you know, and he's beginning to go a little crazy. Rashi says, uh, on the condition or for the purpose of. It's not the purpose of the universe that Hashem should um, reveal his himself um, and teach it like morality to the universe. To So um, we shouldn't be too surprised about uh, about about this. Um, because that's In other words, you're saying, yeah, I mean, if the whole purpose of the world to be created in the first place was in order to spread the word of God among humanity, let's say, yeah. so he needs that, right? So how is he going to do it? He needs a people. How is he going to do it? So he's got to have a people who are going to do the teaching. And how does he make these people do the teaching? By dwelling among them and teaching them so that they would know to be a kingdom of priests and, uh, you know, to go out into the world and teach, right? Mm -hmm. So uh, Pinky's saying that it sort of like makes sense. But you, you, first of all, if you start with uh, Ramban, Rashi, to him, he understands Rashi to mean that... Hashem is saying, I took you out of Mitzrayim only on the condition that you will deserve my dwelling among, among you. Otherwise, you go back to Mitzrayim. He's, he's sounding like it's not Hashem doing it for his own sake, right? Right? It's sort of like, uh, you know, when we say in Kriyat Shema every night, Ani Hashem Elokechem Hashir Otsiti Etchem Eretz Mitzrayim Lihiyot Lachem Lelohim. I took you out of Mitzrayim to be to you the God, right? To be your God. Now, you could understand that in two ways. You could understand that, that I wanted to be your God, so I took you out of the time so I could be your God. And the other way, <coughs> the way Rashi is suggesting is that I took you out of Mitzrayim. The only reason I took you out of Mitzrayim is if you would be ready to have me your God. Otherwise, you go back. Because uh, the whole purpose of your freedom is in order for you, if you only on the condition that you accept my mastery. So two ways of looking at that story, right? So Rashi seems to say that it is the second way. And the Ramban comments, Veshimusha Lamed Betnai, and this Lishkon, le, le, the, the word, you know, like we say, in order to, or on the condition of, Rashi seems to say it's on the condition of, right? And he says that, on condition to use the Lamed, is not found, is not to be found. You don't see that in the Hebrew language used in the Torah anywhere. So let's see if there's a if there's a comment about this. He says a star there, right? I knew the Almanat and Inun himself. I am the Kuraye, Shati Rates, Kigam Rashi, Loki Lane, Lomashiti Alam and Mishanashkimu Almanat, Rakshalo Tomarki, Karotai Talishkom Tokam, 
שזה אינו, שהרי ההוצאה לעצמה הייתה, אלא כשהוציאה מוציאה גם על מנת לשכון בתוכם, לפיכך פירש שההוצאה הייתה גם לשכון בתוכם, וזה מה שכיוון רש"י וכתוב על מנת. If it doesn't work out and, and he can't dwell one among you, then he'll throw you away? Well, condition means condition. I give you a get, you, you, you heard in, in Gittin all the time, right? I give this get to you to give to so-and-so on the condition that you do it in that place. On condition means it's, and if not, then not. I understand, what you, but the Ramban is saying, no, it's, it, Li is in order to. Right? I build this house in order to live in it. Nobody's saying I built this house on the condition that I should live in it, because if I don't live in it, then I want to destroy this house. I mean, it, it, the condition is not the way you would say it. It's the purpose of. Mm -hmm. The purpose of it is because I wanted to live in this house. That's why I built this house, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so he's saying it, the purpose is more likely the language. V'yitachein, sheomar, v'yadu v'shachni b'tocham ki ani Hashem Elohim asher atzeti yotam meretz Mitzrayim, Right? In order to, and, and you could say that they will know when I dwell among them that I am the Lord of their God who, who took them out of Yitzrayim. Ki u kvodi, because they will know my great honor, my presence, ve'aminu, and they will believe that I took them out of Yitzrayim. Now that's very interesting. People went out of Mitzrayim, and God has to, you know, it's very, it's, it's really fascinating. It's really fascinating you know, when you think about it. You know, uh, there are also the, the five Lashonot of Geula that he said in Mitzrayim to them. He said, he said to Moshe, you go to tell the Jewish people, I'm going to take you out of Mitzrayim, right? But he used a few different languages, a few different words about the redemption. So if you remember, it was in, it was in, it was in Bo, the very beginning of Bo. Of course, because you know it off by heart, you know where, where we said, right? So he says like this. He says, you go and tell the Jewish people, and you tell them. I don't know. Or it's in Baera. Baera. It was in Baera, the beginning of Baera, after Moshe had complained, why did you send me? So in Baera, he says to him, right? Yeah. Ani Hashem, I am God. Vehotzeiti etchem. And I will take you out. You're listening to me? But you, I will take you out. This is in chapter 6, verse 6. I will take you out from the slavery of, some, from, from the bondage of Mitzrayim. Vehitzalti. And I will save you from their work. And I will redeem you. Vekaalti etchem. I will redeem you with a strong arm. Uvishvatim gdolim. With many miracles. And I will take you to me as a nation. You have four line, four statements already now, right? Hotseiti, Hitzalti, Gaalti, and Lakahti, right? And I will be to you for a God. Vidatem, and you shall know, and you will know that I am the Lord your God who takes you out of. Who took you out of uh, the Mitzrayim? So you mean to say, it, I mean, this first time we were talking about it. What, what do you mean you will know? You mean they, they won't know? They don't know? It's, it's something that they have to be informed? I mean, they did Hamer Mitzrayim. Yeah, yeah. In other words, what, Hashem, they don't know anything, right? They're getting all kinds of miracles. 
and Mitzrayim is falling apart, mm -hmm. and Moshe is taking them out of Mitzrayim, and what do they know? They never saw God, they never heard God, they never heard God speaking. Moshe is saying, God sent me to you, right? So they really don't necessarily know very much. They're experiencing all these amazing miracles. So we always thought that the Jewish people living in Mitzrayim, coming out of Mitzrayim through all those miracles, have seen before their very eyes God working to take them out. So you don't need this, and you will know. Because, of course, you know. You know from the first step. You know from the second step. You know from the plagues. You know from, you know, you know, do you know anything? So then he says, no, I'm going to take you to me as a people. And you're going to be my chosen people, which is Har Sinai, after I save you. And then you will know that I am the God who took you out of Mitzrayim. You mean, really? After Kriyat Yamsuf, after everything, they have to come to Har Sinai be chosen as God's people, and according to this, even the Shekhinah coming to them in the Mishkan, and then they will know that I am the God who took them out of Mitzrayim. That's fantastic, when you think about it. Is that conceivable, no? That you would have this kind of very wishy-washy feeling about what's going on, until God himself has come to be among you, until he speaks to you, and he says, I am, let me introduce myself. I am the God. You remember you came out of Mitzrayim with all kinds of miracles? I'm the one. He said, Yeah. So, I mean, that communication was required in order for them to understand that God is the one who took them out of Mitzrayim. Isn't that a little fascinating? Um, no? I, I mean, it's a little startling. After all is said and done. And here he's saying that it even goes further, that by my being among them and my when they see my uh, Shekhinah coming, and then they will believe that I, Vayaminu, that I am the one who took them out of Mitzrayim. V'hu k'derech v'hi David l'kol drachav maskil, ki bocher ata leben Yishai. In other words, God will bequeath a certain understanding to them. When he is among them, he will communicate he, so clearly that they will know in their minds. They will know God. They will know God is with them. They will know God took them out of Mitzrayim. They will have this intimate knowledge. It's a very, I, I, I never heard of such a thing. I'm not sure what's, what's bothering me. What's my, so I'm walking around here. I don't have the Shekhinah, right? Yeah. In, in, there's no Mishkan. And, I didn't, uh, I, and God didn't speak to me. So I don't really know. Is that what you're telling me? I don't really know that God took me out of Mitzrayim and that... Well, I mean, I don't really know, right? You, if he would speak to me so and he, if he would be among me, then I would really know. But he told you and asked me that. Yes. Yes. Well, I wasn't there. But you're telling me that maybe, <laughs> according to the Medrash, my soul was there, yeah? But, but I, mean, I mean, so, I mean, so until somebody is at Tar Sinai, he would not know? The, all the experiences of Mitzrayim do not sell, the, 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 do not convey that belief, that awareness. When they came out of, her, of a Kriyat Yamsuf and they sang, Hashem Yimloch Olam Vayed, they do not, I, I don't understand this language, they do not then actually declare God is... The one who's taking us out of Mitzrayim, he's the one. They but they heard, they not they see. They yeah, but they were, they were say they're going through the sea and they sing about God and uh, they, they sing praises. Down. Wow, I mean... Not true, the miracles. No, when I will, no, directly. I, I don't know what to make of this. I, I, okay. I, I hear you guys, I mean... One thing is Le believing me. him. Another thing is believing him, me. I think. Yes. Me. When I actually have dwelled among them, they will know that I am their God. You know what I'm saying? Be. Yeah, so he's saying, this is like a bait. He, when I, through my dwelling among them, they will know that I am the one who took them out of Mitzrayim. And so on. Aval. Let's just skip that. I, I, I'm still finding this perplexing. 
Aval, Rabbi Avraham, which is the Ibn Ezra, Avar, Ki lo hotzeti otam me'eretz Mitzrayim rak ba'avur ki eshkon betokam. I did not take them out of Mitzrayim, but for this purpose, to dwell among them. Right? He says, to Ibn Ezra, Al menat she asu li mikdash ve'eshkon betokam. Vezehu ta'abduna te'elohim al har hazeh. Right? And this is what God said. Remember, he said to Moshe, I want you to know when you have these doubts about whether you're going to come out of Mitzrayim and whether I'm sending you and whether it's going to work, when you will know that when you come out of Mitzrayim on this mountain where I'm speaking to you, with the burning bush, right? That was Har Sinai. You will come to this mountain and you will worship me on this mountain. That will be a proof to you that I have. Now that, that goes even farther. That means that Moshe also doesn't know until the end. When they come to, you will know that. Uh, no, is knowing is not the same as knowing. I mean, there's a difference between experiencing all the miracles and actually feeling God among you and hearing His voice, and then you know. I mean, yeah, how do you express this? I don't. I don't know how to say it. But most of them don't know by now. He's not going to know. Ve'afed Piresh, and he says the Eben Ezra. That's, that's, that's the rare kind. That's the first time I've heard that he says about the Eben Ezra. He did right. He said good. Usually, usually, usually he criticizes them, right? Usually. Yeah. Be Cain, and if so, yesh ba'inyan sod gadol. And if that's the case, then there is a great secret here. Which, by the way, this is a different shot than the one he said before, right? The first shot he said was, Lishochni was that in order that they will know that I am the one who took them out of Mitzrayim, I am going to dwell among them so that when I do this, they will know. That was the shot he gave, right? Rashi says conditional. He says not conditional, but it means b. Bishochni betocham, then they will know. That I am the one who took him out of Mitzrayim. Right? That's that was shot number two. Now he's saying the Ebenezer. Well, different. well, well uh, I free you from prison in order that you should accept my mastery. If you don't accept my mastery, I never intended to take you out of Mitzrayim, out of prison except for that. That's the condition. I took you out of prison in order that you pay me a hundred dollars. You must pay me a hundred dollars. It's it's a, that's the condition upon which I did. But that's not because I need the hundred dollars. You understand? It's not because I need to to be your master. You need me to be. You, master. yeah, you, I. You, that's right. If you if you don't want to do that, then go back to prison. I mean, that's, that's the only reason I took you out. I'm not interested in taking you out for any other reason other than that, right? So so, but then he is now saying that Hashem Himself had a certain need. He took them out of Mitzrayim so that he could dwell among them, so that he could do that. He was looking for a home. And he's saying there's going to be a great secret in this because according to the plain understanding of things, you usually would say that Hashem dwells among the people because that satisfies a great need on our part. We want the Shekhinah among us. We are inspired by the Shekhinah that is among us. We are the ones who are raised up and, and elevated and taught and whatever, right? Inspired when the Shekhinah is among us. That's what you usually would say, right? But it isn't fulfilling a need, so to speak, of Yachol and God who needs to dwell among us, right? That's not the way you'd usually say, right? Haval... Who ke'inyan shamarakatuv Yisrael asher b'cha et pa'er? And in fact, there are a few psukim in the Torah that suggest that God is among the people because He loves them, because He is proud of them. They are my people that give me nachas. V'amar Yehoshua. What will you do? What will you do about your name? What will you do about your great name? Right? Uh, Yehoshua said to Hashem, "If you if you abandon this people, then where will you be? Right? It's not what will happen to us if you abandon us. 
He said, "My yel in shimcha kadom. What's the sale of shimcha kadom? It's going to be a chil l'Hashem. You're going to be without the people, right? You gain from this. Upsukim rabim ba'ul kain, and there are many psukim like that suggesting this. Avel misha, aval mish moshavlo. For example, there's a pasuk, Eva, sixty-eight. Tehirim, he or you have it in dots. It is Eva. If you say so, Kuflam and Beit, 132 Psalm, it says that God has desired to have that dwelling. And oh, another pasuk, Po eshev ki abitiha. Here I will settle because you say ibitiha. Because this I have desired, right? This I have desired. Vikatuv and another uh, pasuk says v'haaret ezkor. And the land I will remember. Now, what has that got to do with it? Let's say there's a couple of footnotes here. One second. I gotta look up to you because, uh, because you're driving me crazy. Where's Tilim? Kuflam and Beit, it says, right? Correct? Yes. Suspense. Are you in suspense? Yes. Yeah. Or not? Ho a shave, right? Ki evitiha. What did I tell you? You say you're right. Evitiha. And you would say sixty-eight is also then Kuflam Beit Yud Gimel. There's another one. You're absolutely right. I think he was right. So, so you notice that these psukim do suggest that Hashem desired it. Hashem wanted it. Hashem needed it, so to speak, right? It's, I mean, it's a, to talk about Hashem needing things is sort of like a, a bit problematic theologically, right? He's not missing anything. Hashem is not uh, like you and me that's hungry for something. So it's hard to know what that means. But he loves, right? So what does love mean? I mean, all right, it's very, very difficult, right? I don't know how to put, uh, probably the words are just, as soon as we say it, we're using human expressions to su suggest something that is not uh, really the way, it, from the way us. it means from us, right? But, but his footnote here is going to say, Ba'avur. Um, Usually, right, you say that the Shekhinah comes to satisfy a need that we have. But in this secret understanding, very profound understanding, it's not so. But it really fulfills a need, a purpose for the divine. I am aggrandized, I'm, I'm made more glorious through your service. What are you going to do about your great name? If the, the nations of the world destroy our our name, then your name is even greater than ours. And what will you do then? Because if we are not here, then then you will have no presence in the world. Who's going to worship you? You have no presence in the world. He says here. Mm -hmm. 
So when you say it's like a, it's like a, a bee flying around looking for a, a flower to get the, the bee to well, it? well, I mean, I don't know what. That's not a. That's to eat something. I mean, that's not a great example. It looks like a. Because he needs, what he's saying is, he is in need. He needs to dwell among. He needs to dwell among the people to communicate. Like a to bee people looking for something. Where is? Where is? Where is? Where is you know? why, however you want to say it, I don't know why you want to talk about a bee. He he needs to be. It's like you need a wife. Not a bee yeah. looking at a flower. Okay. Right. You need a relationship. You need a be, to be dwelling with somebody. You need to be communicating with somebody. You need. It satisfies a need that you have. Yeah? He need because the Jewish people will worship him and do his mitzvot and do his will, then the Shekhinah could say, it's for you that I came in the first place. <clears throat> I desired it. All right, listen. Mm -hmm. I mean, this is very profound, and uh, his second shot is also very profound. How, how they will now know that God is the one who took them out of Mitzrayim at long last, when He puts His Shechina among them. You, 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 you catch that without difficulty. That's all right. I was, I was, I mean, I'm not. <clears throat> I mean, it doesn't, it doesn't shake. It is, to me, it's very difficult. It could be my, my thickness. No, no, I mean, after all is said and done. You remember, remember we said when the Amalek came. So there's a Midrash that says that the Jewish people rebelled and were complaining about the water and their da 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 da, da right? The, and all that stuff. And then it says, when the Jewish people said, we wonder if God is, is with us, is among us or not. Yeah. And immediately, Ryan, and immediately the, the Amalek comes. The very next sentence, the Amalek comes. So there's one Rashi that brings a Mechilta and says, Child, Hashem says to, to, to Ab Yisrael, Child, you've been sitting on my shoulders and I'm carrying you through the desert, right? And there's snakes and there's holes in the ground and there's, you know, rivers and you're, you're sitting up there very comfortable, and you're looking around, and isn't this nice? And I'm walking, right? And I'm taking care of you. And after a while, the child says, I wonder where my father is. Is he here? Yeah? Is that right? Let me show you if I'm here or not. So he puts the, the child down, and the child now has to walk, and he falls in a hole, right? So you understand? In other words, it, 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 the, that medrash does suggest that they are kind of really... Obtuse, they're they're blind. They're, they're they they could experience all the miracles, right? But as long as Hashem doesn't actually talk to them, hey, you see me? Let me introduce myself. I'm the one who took you out of Mitzrayim. Ani Hashem Elokechem Asher Otzeti Efkam Me'aris Mitzrayim. You mean so they didn't know that, right? Not not intimately know that. They sort of yeah. It, the fantastic things have been going on here. You know, the Mitzrayim had all these plagues. And we were able to get out. Very nice. Fantastic things are happening, you know. Earthquakes, earthquakes, and uh, and, and the hailstones, just at the right time in the right place. So it is conceivable. I mean, I, I'm just saying this is a, re a revelation that it fits in with that medrash about this child who's sitting on his father's. Head. You know, you could be carried, and you could also be unaware. Your example is, is very clear. So that means that when these people, when Hashem took him up from his shoulders, he put on the ground, and he found troubles, that was like a test for him. Yeah, he said, oh. So that's why Moshe puts his hands up in the Amalek's battle, and they say, what's he, what's he doing with his hands? Oh, he must mean we have to look up. Uh, there's a guide up there who's supposed to help us, so they, they pray to God. And then he puts his hands down, so they forget that again. And they don't. So you keep saying, you know, that story, we talked about that story with the hands. So, I mean, it seems like 
the Ramban is, is suggesting that there's a reality here that that they could psychologically be kind of really wishy-washy about this whole thing. And Hashem says, I took them out of Mitzrayim in order that I be able to reveal myself completely to them so that they will finally know by talking to them and by putting my shechina among them and by them seeing the cloud of glory right among them in the midbar, in, the, in their tents, that they will then know. As a permanent presence. As a permanent presence, always with them, right, from now on, right. Remember the Ramban last week, we saw that the Mishkan is like a representation of Har Sinai, right? There's a fire and there's smoke and nobody can come in and Hashem speaks through it, just like on Har Sinai. Eh, we went over that, I remember last time. Okay, so there is, this, there is this now continuing communication. So now they will know. But uh, at this point, we are seeing the Shekinah for a long time ago. Who? We, the Jewish people in the desert. So we, we, we just reached uh, Sukkot, the Shekinah start, or the Shekinah, or the present of Hashem, the Ananiah Kavod, and the fire, right? So if we are seeing this example, the fire and the why we are complaining with the water? How could you? How could you fall off back? <laughs> no, it's, it's yeah. difficult. Yeah, I mean, of course it's difficult. It sounds like Hashem is saying, finally, when I do that, that they will know. But uh, you know, the next year they have the uh, Maraglim and they have the all kinds of complaints. So Jewish people can be, or people, people, human beings can be very uh, difficult. So how could how could well, we understand that he is among us if he is already among us since Sukkot? Talking about we live Egypt, we reach Sukkot, starting Sukkot to the land. Sukkos the present of Hashem is forty with years. Yeah. For 40 years, and they had a lot of ups and downs. You're asking, how is it possible for people to forget that and become so, I suppose, it's possible to get used to almost anything. Well, you know, that's the way of going to the land of giants. Yeah, yeah, well. Yeah, but if you have God above you and you're really aware of it. You know, Avram Becker, you know him? Of course, yeah. See, he's a fascinating guy. See, he once told me, kind of a fantasy, he says like this, at the end of the 40 years in the desert, there's a mother and a child who grew up in the desert. And the mother says to the child, you know, soon we're going to go over the Ardain into the Jordan River and we're going to go into a fantastic land that Hashem promised us and Abraham, Yitzhak, and Yaakov are going to go there. He says, yeah. She's like a five-year-old kid, right? So she says, yeah, and it's going to be very special because... We're going to eat completely differently. She says, yeah. He says, yeah, you know. He says, the people are going to have like a little seed. Like a little seed, a little hard little seed. And then he says, yeah. And then put it on, they're going to throw it on the ground. He says, yeah. And he says, after they throw it on the ground, it's just going to sit there. And then there's going to be some rain coming down. This little seed, this little hard seed, it's going to open up, it's going to make roots in the ground. He says, what, really? And then, yeah, he said, she, then it's going to grow up and make a whole plant, a green plant. He says, yeah, what then? And they said, and it's going to have these little seeds on the top of this little plant. He says, whoa, what do they do with that? He says, well, they take it and they dry it and they throw it in the air and they break it up. And they grind it, he says, yeah, and they grind it up. And then they put water on it, and they make a mush out of it, and then they put it in the oven, he says, yeah, and out comes bread. He says, wow. He says, we're not going to have the man anymore. We're going to have that. He says, wow, that's miraculous. You understand? That's a miracle. <laughs> now, because... You, you know what I mean? Because you, you live with the ground every morning with mine. <laughs> so with we, that's not a miracle. That's that's the way life is. Yes, <laughs> that's the way life is. So the fire and the and the cloud 
huh. comes around and travels, and the mud falls on the ground. So in the beginning, it's amazing, right? Yeah, yeah. The people all <laughs> cheered and went crazy when the Shekhinah came. After a while, you live with the Shekhinah, you know, familiarity breeds contempt, I mean, you know. So the man, it's pretty interesting, the man, okay, but only after a while, the man is interesting. We children see snow for the first time, they think it's the most amazing thing in the world, right? After that, snow is snow. I mean, they confuse the snow. <laughs> I mean, so I mean, you, it is possible. You're right. It's a very disappointing thing, and the Chama Levuitz points out all the time. Also, miracles don't, you know, supernatural things don't have a permanent effect on people. Permanent effect. They can nudge you. They can nudge you. But if you don't incorporate it into your being consciously and work on it, then then uh, it's very temporary. Kanye, right? So God could say, here I am, here I am, after I started, and I know that you're going to know, so God could say, tomorrow, when we don't pay attention to it, he says, here I am, I came here so that you would know me, and uh, we just uh, ignore it, ignore him. Very sad. Mm -hmm. I think that's a very short Ramban, but it's incredible. Yes, it is. Hmm. Yeah. So then, if we want to do, do you want to do the bells or you want to do the Urim Betumim? Next. The bells. Well, the bells or the Urim Betumim? Since you're working on the bells, you want to do the Urim Betumim? Or do you want, what do you want to do? Well, you were really worried about the bells. Um, okay, so you, let's do the Urim Betumim. I worry about the Urim Betumim. I wrote about the Urim oh. Betumim. Oh, so you want to do the bells? Yeah, let's do the bells. Okay, let's do the bells. Good. Uh, he said, it's it's uh, chapter 28, verse 35. And it's page Taf Ayin Chet. 28. He says, Taf Ayin Chet, because it's in the middle of it. You'll see. It's, he, it's, after, it's after a while. It's in, in the middle of it. Right? We will find it in a moment. Umasha Amar. Where is it? Umasha Amar. Uh, 28. 28, verse, uh, chapter 28, verse 35. 28, 35. Do you have it somewhere? No. What? What do you mean, no? Why? Chapter 28. That's the Palm 1 in. 35. That's in the middle of. It's the middle of that discussion. Yes. What? Well, but it probably continues. One second. Chapter 28. I mean, I've got it here pretty clearly where he wants us to go. Oh, yeah. So Rambo? 28. Rambo is coming. Here below the end of this chapter in accordance with the place, 28. place in, in the Paramount is born. 28. Uh, the verse. Well, Amar. He says it's Masha Amar. Wait a second. What, what did I say? Chapter 35, right? So he says here, Yes. Well, there it is. It's, it starts from, it starts from uh, 31, verse 31. Right. That you shall make him a coat, a fold, there's going to be a, this kind of a seam upon it and so on and so on. And then he says, on the, on the hem of this coat in, in verse 33, you should make these rimonim, these uh, kind of uh, Fruit-like uh, round things, trailer and argaman, talat shani al shilav sabif, and upamoi zahab, pamonei zahab betocham sabif, and inside these round uh, containers, these these rimonim, will be bells of gold. You see that? Verse 30, 33 in chapter twenty-eight. You see it? No, it's in the middle, isn't it? Thirty-three. What's this? It says uh, 31 and, and goes, goes and goes on. Look at 33. I'm looking for that. I don't have an, I don't have a 33. No. Not there. In the Bible. Oh. Oh, in the Bible. Talk about the Bible. Oh, <laughs> talk about the Bible. Goodness gracious. 
And you shall put uh, golden golden bells inside those round rimonim that are on the hem of the coat. Pamon zahav rimon, pamon zahav rimon. Yeah, alternating. Pamon zahav rimon, and so on and so on. Al shilei ameil saviv, all around his hem of his coat. And then it says in verse thirty-five, v'haya this coat, this cloak, al aharon l'sharet. Mm-hmm. It will be on him wearing it when he comes to serve. Venishma mm-hmm. kolo, and the sound, its sound, not mm-hmm. his, not his voice, kolo shel Aaron, but kolo shel Abamon, the of, or of this coat. This coat's sound will be heard when he comes before Oel Hakodesh, when he comes into the holy, before God, and when he leaves, it shall be heard when he comes in and when he goes out. Veloyamut and he shall not die. Now that's a very strange. Well, what's what's that all about? You mean to say, if he comes in without the bells, he's going to die? What he punished? Well, what's the story? So, and what is the purpose of the bells being heard when he comes in? Right? When I come into my house or into your house, I would usually ring the bell, right? So that you'd know that somebody is there and uh, say, come in, right? Is that what's going on here? That he should be with the bell before he comes in? I mean, it's a, it's a, it's a conversation, right? So the Ramban has a discussion about it in Taf Ayin Chet, but he says, Mashi Amar. I see the discussion at the beginning, in the middle of Ramban, Ramban, Lama Al. I don't get it. Why do you say that? Because the Veloya Dati Gamke Lama Asala Rav Hapon Hat Amorim. Oh, that's what he's saying, is the shape. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, he's talking about details here. I don't say, Masha So, you want to start from Lamed Hei Veloy Amut? Or you want to start from the beginning? Yeah, so you mean he, he made a mistake? So, you mean, so why does he say Tafayin um, Chet? Okay, Mi'il. Um, you want to do that? Lamed Aleph? He's on about 31? In the middle of that one. Ah. Chaluk? Uh, one second. Yeah. 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 There. He, Pinky says we should start in the verse that the Ramban talks about 31. On verse 31. The Loyadati? And I don't know, yeah. Okay. And I don't understand also why Lama Asaha Rav Paamonim Le'atzmam Paamon Ben Shnei Rimonim. Why did the the Rav, I guess is the Rav, Rashi, Rashi. why did the Rashi suggest that there are bells by themselves and this Rimon, this, this, uh, this, this what? Pomegranate by itself. And that the bell is between two pomegranates. Ki in came, because if so, lo hayu harimonim mishamshim klum. Because in that case, then these pomegranate figures don't serve anything. V'im lenoi, and if they're only for beauty, lama hayu asuyim kirimonim chalulim. If they're only for beauty, why make them hollow? Hollow sounds like there's something inside of it. Okay. Yase kimun tapuchei zahav. Let them be like, like apples of gold, solid. Well, if you want to save money, you would make it hollow. Okay. Oh, And if, if that's the case, that the pamon, the bell is by itself, and the rimon is by itself, then you would have to tell us how you will hang the bells. Like, is it going to be on a ring or something? But he believes, this is what it is, the rimonim, the pomegranates, are on the coat, and inside the pomegranate is the bell. It's inside. Okay. That's the Ramban. Ki aromanim chalulim. They are hollow, these these, these uh, pomegranates, and they're made like uh, small pomegranates that did not yet open their mouth. And the bells are within them. And they're visible within them. In other words, there's probably some kind of like a lattice work in these remotes so you could see through, I guess. 
ולא פרש הכתוב מנין, and מניינן, and we don't know how many there were, right? It's all the way around the coat. אבל רבותינו אמרו שהיו שבעים ושניים זגים. There were 72, what is a zagim, like a twigs? Ubahem, shivim v'shnaim anbalim. There were two parts of the bell, one of the hanging. Oh, inbal, that there were, the, yeah, two hanging, like little uh, hanging things. V'toleh, shloshim v'shisha mitzad echad, v'shloshim v'shisha mitzad echad. There were 31 on one side of the coat and 31 on the other side of the coat. So 72 altogether, like it says in the zvachim in the, in the, uh, in the Talmud. ומכאן תלמוד שאינו כמין חלוק, תלמוד שאינו כמין חלוק וקטונת, אלא יש לו כנפיים. So you know now that this is, has two flanks, like, right? So like a split. The coat is split into two wings, like two sides. Right? So if you talk about uh, a coat with a side and a slit up the back and a slit in the front, so you've got two sections. Okay? All right. וכן כתב רש"י, שהמצנפת כמין כובע, שהרי במקום כמין... אוקיי, that's something else, right? That's something else entirely. So where are we going to get to the bells? אוקיי, ולא ימות. ולא ימות. The next phrase, 35, right? He's got to go in with this coat, and it should be heard when he's coming in and going out, and he shall not die, right? מכלל לאו אתה שומע הם. From the fact that he's not going to die if he comes in and he's heard with the ringing, mm-hmm. you hear that he will die if he doesn't have it. Okay? Sounds like. Im yihiyu alav. If he is wearing it, he will not die. Ha im yikaneis lukusar echad miyakadim alalu chayab mita. Lashon Rashi. That means if he comes in without one of the clothing that he should wear, then he is guilty of death. And I don't believe this. He says, are you with us? Are you, are you beginning 35? Verse 35 in the Ramban. 35 is, is nothing. 35 is Ramban comments on the Hijatat Lehi. Below, below Yamut. Yeah. It is appear below at the end of the chapter in accordance with the place, placement in the Parma. So why don't you look over here? Because obviously they're not writing it for some reason. I don't know. 35. Something funny about the one they skipped that I don't get it. Verse 35 in the Ramban. Chapter So yeah, Rashi suggests that it's like any of the clothing that he would be missing, he would die. I don't think it's true. He says, Eino nachon, beinai, in my, my view. Shehaya lo lichtov pasuk ze la'achar sheyazkil kol shmona b'gadim. Why is he mentioning it now after he has mentioned all the other clothing? V'lama yizkir ze b'shlosha b'gadim. Why does he mention it actually that, a pers- that the Kohen has to have it in order to stay alive with, in particular, these three clothing. One, the Choshen, and the ephod, which is this coat, umi'il, right? Kodem she'askir tzitz, before he mentions the tzitz, the crown, the, 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 the what, what is it called? Front the front plate. Uvikatonet mitznefet v'avneitu michnasayim, right? So if it's true that he has to be, that if he's missing any of the clothing, he would be guilty of death. This is, sounds like a funny interruption to put it right here before he's done all the clothing's discussion, right? Right in the middle. V'chein avar v'say tov yamut. And here he says also, and when he goes out, remember, it's got to be heard when he comes in, and when he goes out and not die. Well, going out, you don't die if you go out without the clothing. <coughs> yeah, you don't, you don't become guilty of death by walking out without the proper clothing. Aval. Okay, you understand. The Rashi, he is rejecting Rashi. Aval. He, if you look at the Gemara, he says carefully, the Chachamim do not believe what Rashi says. Aval. Etzlam, ha mitzvah azot shava bekulam. This mitzvah of the coat, 
with the bells is somehow worth as much as all the others. We're going along, along. I'm not going to read this. This is something about the other clothing. When they are wearing it, well, only when they're covering the shoes, the, the clothing the, 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 of the pants. Yeah. He, we're, I'm sure we have to skip this because that's... Oh, right. Four lines from the bottom. Okay. That, that's what he that was pointed to, those words, Masha Amar. Do you see it? And what he said, that which he said, Lamala, above. Do you see that? Venishma mm-hmm. Kolo, and the sound shall be heard when he comes into the Kodesh, and he not, shall not die. Right? That can't be said that he will wear it or not wearing it. There's something about the sound that has to be there in order not to die. Right? What's the idea? It's got nothing to do, it is true that the Kohen in order to serve, has to have all the appropriate clothing. But there's nothing special about hearing the bells among all the clothing. If he doesn't wear his pants, if he doesn't wear the head gear, if he doesn't wear all those things, he must not come in without and do the avodah without this proper clothing. But this pasuk is special, he said, about the bells. What's going on? V'hu al dati. That is according to my opinion. What's the idea? Biur le mitzvata pa'amonim. This is an explanation about the mitzvah of the bells themselves. Ki. I, I will wait for you. Okay. <laughs> of course, go ahead. When you gotta go, you gotta go. Okay. Uh, you know, there's a bathroom right here. Where? Uh, on the just left right. of this door. Yeah, you know that one? Yeah. There's a, there's a, no, at the left, on the left, that's right. There's a, there's a switch for light there. <laughs> He's going to say something fascinating, yeah. He's going to suggest that we're not talking about any special regulation concerning clothing. Because the regulation here is special. The regulation here that is being warned about is the bells shall be heard, right? So all this business that Rashi... By what? By whom? By whom? We'll see, right? Is by it shall be heard. So he's going to make one comment, and the one comment is like we said before you're going into a king's palace. You don't just walk in. You uh, shake the bell, asking permission to come in. Right? Walking in without permission is audacity, it's uh, being fresh. Mm-hmm. Right? So that's one thing. Right? Of course, it doesn't explain going out. We'll see in a minute, right? I mean, he, he's only beginning the discussion. So he says, he gives an example. He says, like a chashverosh, you know, mahabdil, you know, to, with, with a puny king like that. We're not talking about the Kalish Baruch Hu, right? Anybody who came, you know, saw how awesome the palace of the, uh, the approach of the king was, and anybody who came without permission, you know, would be killed unless the king allowed him, right? So this is the kind of honor that one would have to approach coming into the Kodesh by the Kohen Gadol with the bells. Okay, that's his first. That's his first suggestion, right? We're waiting for him, so I will go on. All right. Yeah? So his first suggestion is Lachain. It's two lines for the bottom. We're talking about the bells, in particular. We're talking about the hearing of the bells. We're not talking about clothing and their requirements. This regulation is a different regulation, not with the way Rashi put it, right? So, Lachain Amar. You see it? The two lines of Rashi? Lachain Amar. Ki tziva bahem bavur shi yishma kolo, yishama kolo bakodesh. The sound of those bells shall be heard in the holy section. 
ייכנס לפני אדוניו כאילו ברשות. The Kohen Gadol shall enter like with permission. כי הבא בהיכל מלך פתאום חייב מיתה בתכסיסי מלכות. Usually, right, you, anybody who barges into a king's palace would be executed in the usual way that the world goes, right? כי עניין החשוורוש, we know, right? Talking about Purim coming soon. וירמוז למה שאמרו במסכת יומא ירושלמי, וכל אדם לא יהיה באוהל מועד. No man shall be in the sanctuary. Now what does he mean? Now we're going into something new. אפילו אותן שכתוב בהם ודמות פניהם פני אדם. Even, right? It says וכל אדם. All men shall not be in the Olam Oed when the Kohen Gadol comes to serve. He means to say even those who look like men, who are not really men. Who are those? The angels who serve God. They look like the visage of a man, but they're not really men. All men shall not be in the, in the Kodesh when he comes to do the, uh, the, the, the work in the Mishkan, right? Lo hayu ve'oemoi, they shall not be there. Now, by the way, of course, that means the angels could be there before. The Yom Kippur comes, and Aaron Akoin comes in, he's walking in with the bells, the angels are not going to be there. Al Kain Tzivala Hashmiya Kolo, therefore he wants the bells to be sounded. Kemishi Yikra, as though someone is declaring, making an announcement, Hotziyu Kol Ishme Alai, take out everyone from here. You remember who said that? Yosef. Yosef says that, right? When he, when he was going to reveal himself to his brothers, he says, everybody go out, right? Because this was going to be an intimate moment. He didn't want anybody else to hear the terrible things that the boys did. He didn't want all, anybody else to see him crying. He didn't want it, right? So he says, get everybody else out here. I'm going to meet with my brothers. So here, Lahavdil, right? Aaron, a Kohen, a Gadol, coming to serve in the Beit HaMikdash on Yom HaKippur, he will say, God and me, and all you angels, get out. Mm -hmm. Wait, wait a minute. That God. God and me. The right. Only God and me, right? And all you angels have to get out, right? So it's Hotzi will call Ishmael life, Viyavo, and he will come, Lavodet Hamelech Biyachud. And he will come to serve God alone, privately. Vechain Vitzeto. Also, when he gets out, he shall go out with permission. You don't leave the king when you're in the middle of an audience with the king, yeah. except by having him dismiss you, right? right? Mm -hmm. And so that the bells will ring on the way out, in order that the servants of the king will go away and come back. before him. I guess, and, and well... If the, if the angels are waiting on the exit door, right, they, they've left. And he has a private audience with the king, so to speak. The so now he has to ring the bells when he goes out, both to get permission to leave, but also to tell the angels, get out of and my way, I'm leaving. So they will open up a, a channel for him to leave, and then they can go back. <laughs> and so what do you mean by that he may not die? For, so on one hand, it would mean he's going into the king audacity without permission and leaving without permission. He could die for that. But then he also could die because the angels are jealous. Yes. <laughs> the angels don't uh, feel so great that the Aaron is, Aaron is saying, okay, you guys, uh, I'm coming in. You have to leave, right? <laughs> so <laughs> isn't this incredible? Yeah. And, and it's very incredible. <laughs> in order that they shall not you know, blast them. He's here, Zeh, and he warned in particular, Bikoin Gadol, Lamalato, because he is so high. Vizetam Lifnei Hashem. He shall come in before God. The, the Pasuk there said, Vaya al Arona Kohen, Lisharait, Nishma Kolob, Voy la Kodesh, Lifnei Hashem. Lifnei Hashem means really up close, right? Kihu Babur Lefanab. Over lefanav because he's coming before him. so that the shechina will rest upon his worship, upon his work. Ki malach Hashem tzvaotu. He, the Kohen Gadol, is like the angel of God himself. The Kohen Gadol. 
three lines from the Rashi, right? He, he has expressed, he has mentioned this way fifty three. That's a pasuk in Malachi, talking about nefesh uh, kohen gadol, right? Amazing. Ki ha'ediotim yikansu ba'echal lahaktir u'lahetiv, because the lower kohanim come in to uh, take care of the uh, of the ketores and to take care of the um, oh the haktar haktaris of uh, of the emurim to to burn off the things next to the mizbeach and to prepare the candles. That's not the same. For aiti v'medrash ve'el shmot rabba b'avnei achoshen ma tam she'yakadosh brachu mistakel b'hem. Why I saw in a book, which is uh, again Medrash, why about the Avnei Choshen? Why did a Kaddish Baruch Hu look at the stones of the Choshen when he saw the clothing of the Kohen Gadol when he came in on Yom Kippurim? Then he scar lezuchut Ashvatim. And he would then be reminded of the merit of the tribes. Rabbi Yeshua B'Shem, Rabbi Levi Omer, Mashal Leben Blachim, right? This is like a prince. Shehaya pedagog, nichnaset slo, melamed al beno sanigoria. So he, the king, has a son, right? Mm -hmm. And the son is sometimes not so uh, terrific, not so well behaved. The king is not always happy with him. So his teacher goes in, to the king to uh, encourage the, that the king should look at his, as his son uh, with favor. You know, he's really a good boy. He's trying. Yeah. And he, the teacher, is a little afraid because all these great ministers, you know, all the cabinet is standing around the king. And when he's coming in to uh, talk about this uh, young prince who's a little bit of a juvenile delinquent, you know, he thinks that these ministers are going to hurt him, the king. That the ministers are going to hurt the teacher. Maasa, what should he do? He be show poor pira. He shilo. He dressed in the some kind of a garment. What is it? Sacred garment. Sacred garment of the king, right? Of a royal clothing. Now this is a this is a lowly teacher. He's putting on the king's clothing. So that the ministers would be afraid of him because here he is coming in, he must be a 